It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers, and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground. Meanwhile, for the visiting Dolphins, we know about the weapons on offense on the perimeter. But you think this is a team, Charles, that needs to step it up defensively to go to the next level? I do. And they have the pieces in place. They have excellent players. Perhaps the new system that's been brought in will give them that edge that they need in the AFC East. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And they will ring it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Ravens offense going to work. And as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. DC, eh? Right to the air is Jackson. A short one there, caught by Likely. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. First carry now for Justice Hill. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. They'll try and run for it with Hill. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Great first drive defensively. Third and short, able to stuff the run. And what it does is it gives not just confidence to your defensive players, it gives an overall feeling of, okay, we've established things here early. We can carry this throughout the game. Facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt Jordan Stout out there. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. Fielded just inside the 20. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback. Now in his fourth NFL season to a tongue of Iloa. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there, but for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and it allows him to make some special plays out there. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. 
And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And from the 34, here's second and four. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. It was Jadavian Clowney who got upfield for the stop. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing now is Tugamailoa. They set up the screen. HN has it. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one-receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. That's an early scramble to be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. And now Jackson will look to throw it. That's out to Hill, right side complete. Only able to gain a couple there, and it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? Well, you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy in the perimeter. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, turn into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball, get it out to him. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and one. Jackson options out left and running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. They'll try and run for it. Here's Hill. And he'll get nothing out of that one. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Yes, it's the first half, but we'll see if that stuff there on third and one comes back to haunt him. I hope you don't mind, but it's not going to stop me from putting a check mark next to this play. Let's look back as this game progresses and see if this is one of the key plays in the game, even though it occurred early. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. So Miami coming out for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. On second down, Tua. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Going to the air, Tugabailoa. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On play action, here's Tua. And going deep for Hill. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. Five yards, now it's third and five. Now Tua. near the 45 at the 44. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target, 
able to pick up another first down. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Two and a throw again. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Over the dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Looking to pass to him. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need ten yards out of it on third. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. How about the show put on by these two defenses in this first half? The fireworks don't have to be just offensively. Neither one of them given an inch. And that's good coverage once again there to force another fourth down. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. The Ravens ready to take over. And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. They'll run straight ahead with Hill. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Out now is a punter, Jordan Stout. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Here's Barrios. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And they will take over first and 10. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. Go, 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 go. 
Now the rookie third round pick. It's Devon A. Chan. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Now second and three. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe the Dolphin got going a little early. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. Off a of play action, tongue of Iloa. And that's caught inside the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Give him 32 on the play. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give him a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. HN gets it from the gun. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They go back to the ground, this time Mostert. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Here's Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. First catch there for Hill, and he's got a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Getting in there for the tackle, Marcus Williams. Now a second and six. Tua going to throw. They'll swing this out wide. Here's HN. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to lead to a third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Tongue of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. So fourth down, two of departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. 
From his end zone, here comes Justice Hill. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. And they'll begin by running the option. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. What a run there. I mean, you've got speed, elusiveness, escapability all rolled into one. And we all know that quarterbacks are coached. They get the ball to the guys who can do all the things you just described. You want those guys who have speed, elusive. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Oh, and one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. So that play, I mean, it was pretty well blown up from the start, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and when you're running the option like that as a quarterback, you have so many different keys and reads to make that sometimes as you're making them, you're not protecting the ball the way you should, and it gets popped free. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Following the fumble recovery, here's Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he's got this down to the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Here's a handoff to Mostert running left. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Now Tua on the bootleg here. He is going to find Hill here. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 12-yard line. 14 yards through the air. Caught the D off guard on third and one. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that'll make it second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They work now on second and nine. Tua sets up to pass it. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. From the gun, it's Tua. 
to a hit in the boiler's head. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So fourth down, two of departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. The kick by Sanders is good, and they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh, yeah. they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach will be ecstatic. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And well, this is picked up by the Dolphins. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise and that's the head coach absolutely and when's it going to go down when they stop fumbling <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film and only if they manage to win the game And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. And they run the option here on first and ten. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Jackson now. Quick slam complete to OBJ. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On third and short, they'll try option left. And some room to run now. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. 
yards. Well, partner, that's one of the problems when you sell out to stop the run on third and short. Sometimes you break the initial wall and you go a long way. So how do you prevent it? <laughs> that's tough to do. That really is tough to do. One of the things offenses like to do nowadays in practice, you know, they do a lot of working against equal numbers. They'll start putting more and more numbers on defense and just telling the offensive guys, figure it out, learn how to block it. We may see this situation. Pretty good first down play keeps them ahead of schedule, as they say. And ostensibly, they could go right back to it because there are multiple options on this play. Hand it inside, quarterback tucks it and keeps it, quarterback throws the ball downfield. You should be able to react to the defense and have an option available on every snap. And he stopped after a gain of one, not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well, it wasn't much of a gain, but we're getting near the two-minute warning, so maybe they just want to get to that point, regroup, and decide what they want to do the rest of the half. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. This will be play number seven on the drive, third and a yard. Now Jackson. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And the Dolphins are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. And that felt like a little extra pressure on that third down attempt. And their mistake cost them points because they're inside the red zone. So you know you've got at least a field goal waiting for you. And in this case, they end up with nothing. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. After the turnover, it's Tua. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. And Wilson in motion left. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told them, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He has just not had his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no exception. Here's second and ten now from about the 32. They'll set up a throw. Throw to the right, taken in by Berrios. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Third down and six. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And that will be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. 
On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded at the 20. Shreds the tackle. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. I wonder if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, and try and get the ball in the end zone. I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so because the run has been very effective for them. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. That is caught with Sean Bateman. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. So they will wave off the flag and let the completion stand. Really great job by the receiver fighting through all the contact and still coming down with the football. All that great work and practice being put into the game. Now Jackson on first down, finds his man, it's Kohler. The Ravens gonna use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. From the 35, back to work on second and four. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they have a first down and well into field goal range also at the 16 now. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. A 33-yarder from the left hash. Tucker's kick is good. And they are on the board, trailing now 6-3. to three. Now Maybe a moral victory of sorts. They're on the board here late in the first half, but this offense just hasn't looked that sharp. Yeah, but at least they got the three points, right? At least have something to, quote-unquote, hang their hats on and maybe feel a little bit better about themselves as they head to the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This was a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. Barrios going to bring this out of the end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Dolphins getting set to go back to work here in quarter number three. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. A quick throw there is incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. The Dolphins will send out the punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And take it right on the 30. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Now a 10th carry for Hill. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Once he broke through that first wave of defenders, there was a pretty big gap there for him to run. And it helps that they were in a dime defense. That's six defensive backs. So this is why a lot of teams now are searching for those linebacker safety combo type guys who can add a little bit more size on the defensive side of the ball but can still run as well because when you run against six DBs with some bigger offensive linemen, you often get this result. The tackle credited to Deshaun Elliott, the safety. 
Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. And he's heating up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. From the gun, Jackson. That one into the hands of Flowers. And he will have a Ravens first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. They go play action now. Jackson. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Ravens have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And he's got it as the lead is now 10-6. So that drive goes eight plays. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. The Miami's offense set and ready to go. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Looking to pass. Tua. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Off the edge and right to the ball that time was Kyle Van Noy. 
That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 45-yard line. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Oh, a lot of credit to the play caller here. He saw the design in his mind and implemented it. A little zone stretcher here because they started the tight end on the left side of the formation and set him on a crossing route. And this works really well when you can find that space between levels, and they were able to do so for good yardage. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Two are going to throw. On target over the middle to Hill. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. From the 38 now, here's second and three. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. This one deep for Wilson. And this is incomplete. Oh, that looked like a sure six points. But he could not get that to stick. And that is a golden opportunity wasted there. Oh, I don't know if he's sensing contact to come or what, but that's a ball he'd love to have back. That could have gone for big yardage, but it just didn't want to stay in his hands. That's a tough break. They'll try and run here with Moster. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Would have been right at about a 52-yard field goal try, but no, they are going to go for this thing on fourth down. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he's not even going to come close to picking up the first. They stop him right at the line of scrimmage. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. The drive will start with an option going left. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, it's Hill. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 96 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Now a shotgun handoff to Hill. 
And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Here's third and six. To throw is Jackson. Quickly into the hands of Beckham. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Miami set to take over. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at the 20. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And they'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Play action, now it's Tua. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. We're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. And that one to the right side and incomplete. And we're into the second half now. And this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Ravens will get it. First and ten from deep in their own territory. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here. A little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A give up the gut to him. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
This offense so far on third down, not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and eight. Here's Jackson to throw. And it is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Here's Tua. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Tua. And Wilson with it complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards to pick up there. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Throwing now is Tugamailoa. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A run straight ahead with H.M. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. And now here come the Ravens. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. So what did they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how did they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, that's you, partner. 
Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in. Even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line, they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection. Not a lot of counters. Not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try to move forward. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 48 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, oh, they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Jackson from the shotgun. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Christian Wilkins showing his strength and quickness there. A loss of four. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and ended up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Now Jackson on second down. On target to his man, likely. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 24-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. It's caught by OBJ. That's good, the completion there for seven yards at its second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. On second down, here's Jackson. Complete to Likely. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him the first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big-time drop. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Ravens on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Give him three yards there, as that'll take us to fourth down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This will get the lead up to seven. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13-6. 
Well, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Barrios now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And he's up in it after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. From the 25, here's second and six. Going to the air, Tugger by Loa. This one left side caught by Barrios. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. On play action, here's Tua. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Second and ten. Looking to pass. Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Dolphins first down. No problem there. They get the first by plenty on fourth and inches. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. On first and ten, it's Mostert. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down, Tua. Throw to the right, taken in by Barrios. The noise is getting deafening. Here's third down and three. Here's Tonga by low to throw. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Justin Matabike working. 
working his way to the quarterback that time. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And they've got a fourth down now in a game that, to be honest, has been pretty much everything we could have asked for. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Dolphins first down. And it is a big letdown there defensively. They somehow allowed to convert on fourth and long. And there's a chance for them to end the game. An incompletion It's probably over. But how big was that one, though, to keep this game going? That's the conversion of the game right now, no doubt. Now Tua. On target over the middle of the hill. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nice, well coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. They come up now on second and two. Tua. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and 10 now. Throwing to a... They set up the screen. A-chan has it. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Here's second down. Here's Tua. They might look back on and say, we really prepared ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. A big play here. Crowd on their feet. Third and four. Ball starts going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. And the crowd a major factor now. Here's third down. Two and a throw. Final seconds there, a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So take away the touchdown there, as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. And it's intercepted at the goal line. And the Ravens have just about sewn up this football game. 
A fourth down, they felt compelled to go for it, and he throws the INT. Yeah, he knows that you can't take a sack there, so he had to try and force one in. Now, this might not be a throw he makes it for in the second quarter, but he had to take the chance there, and this one wound up being intercepted. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Let's go. Now second and nine. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. Third and two. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And I think the game balls need to be distributed on the defensive side of the football, and I bet that you would agree. Yeah, if you hold a team under 10 points, that's a job well done. Really well done. So I would say game balls for every starter and every key player who participated in this game. Now, see, I, I only like one game ball. You just you're, like you're, one handing game out, ball? you're handing out multiple, although I set you up by saying game balls, plural. Yeah, but yeah, I, but, but I, I like where we're going with this, though. You say one to I, represent, yeah. like, the best player of all of yeah. that. And I say multiples so that you keep everyone motivated and involved. You're a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. You, I thought I was the only child. You yes, get a game ball, child. and you get a game <laughs> ball. Game balls for everybody. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.